Prinza, developer advocate at Anchor. And in this video, what we are going to do is we are going to write our very first NFT smart contract. We are also going to be deploying it on Optimism Co1 testnet. And by the end of this entire tutorial, you'll be able to mint an NFT and display it on Quixotic. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Quixotic, it's basically an NFT marketplace on Optimism, just like OpenSea, where you can buy NFTs, you can sell NFTs, you can list, mint, display your NFTs. And one thing which is cool about this platform is that it also supports testnet environments. So if I go ahead and add this prefix right here in this URL and say testnet, You're going to see that it says that we have entered the optimism testnet environment and down here you'll also see some of the test collections now this really comes handy for developers to really try run or test run their nft smart contracts or maybe see the entire minting process and see if the nfts are really appearing as it was expected but before we get our hands dirty let's just go over a few concepts like what is the R721 and what is this optimism network on which we will be building our very first NFT smart contract. So what I have here is this ethereum.orgs page open right in front of me. And as you can see that ERC721 is this token standard for non-fungible tokens. And so when we talk about non-fungible tokens or NFTs, what we really mean is that the value of these tokens really depends on how unique they are or what's the rarity of a particular NFT. And because these tokens are unique, they cannot be interchanged for one another. And so ERC721 right here is this standard which provides or which allows the implementation for NFTs to happen within the smart contracts. And smart contract is nothing but a piece of code which we will be writing really soon. But all in all, it just provides us with this standard functionality or the standard basic interface to work with. And in our case, it's going to be for the non-fungible tokens or NFTs. Now, next up, what we have is the optimism. So, I mean, I'm assuming that you might have heard about Ethereum and this entire guest this issue. And so optimism right here is this layer to scaling solution for ETH. And it uses this technology called rollups, more specifically optimistic rollups. And what it really does is that all the transactions are executed off the chain or off the Ethereum mainnet. And then it gets rolled and bundled into this one transaction before it's pushed to the mainnet or to the Ethereum uh, layer one. And so this exactly this whole mechanism kind of increases or improves the transaction speed and decreases the cost per transaction. So Ethereum uh, or this optimistic rollups or the optimism itself is a very fast chain as compared to the Ethereum itself. And transactionally, it's very cheap to work with. So developers might want to make or just launch their NFT collection on optimism. So this is what we are going to do in this tutorial. We are going to be deploying our very first NFT smart contract on optimism. But before we do that, Let's just take a quick rundown over a few tools and libraries which we'll be working on throughout this entire project so that we better understand what we are building. All right, so first up, we have Hardhead. Now, Hardhead is a development environment if you want to build Ethereum projects or software or applications in general. And what this tool right here allows developers to do is that it allows developers to easily deploy their smart contracts or run their test or debug Solidity code without having to worry about any production environment. And so if we think about that, what it really does is that it is automating or managing the entire workflow of the development process or making or launching of the smart contract in general. And so if we go ahead and explore the documentation, you'll see some of the overviews about what Hardhead is and what is this Hardhead network. Um, they have this task and plugin concepts. You can check that out as well. They have guides as well, how to set up a project, how to compile contracts. So we're going to take a lot of help from this documentation. You'll also find me working with these commands right here to begin with. This one right here is to install Hardhead and then we have npx hardhead to kind of create a hardhead project so this is hardhead for you next what we are going to work on is this open zeppelin library now this is a huge huge repository of well audited smart contracts 
And so if we go ahead and find the contracts, they also have this tool, by the way, uh, which is called, here we go. So there's this tool called Contracts Wizard, which is kind of a plug and play kind of tool where all you have to do is just plug some settings, some configurations, and it will give you with some bare minimum code base to work with for your smart contract. So this is a great tool. Um, and this is exactly what we are going to work on for our smart contracts to be built or made. And the last thing that we have or will be working on is Pinata. Now, Pinata is this cloud service platform where we can house our NFT assets or NFT metadata on IPFS. And IPFS is this distributed system where we can store or share or access some files or applications or data in general uh, in a very distributed peer-to-peer -peer network way. And so these three are the major tools or libraries uh, which we'll be using throughout our project. And so I think with that, we are good to go and start working, building our very first NFT smart contract. So let's go and hit our code editors. Now, before we go ahead and start really working on our code editors, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have our crypto wallet set up. In this case, we are going to be working with MetaMask. So we want to make sure that we have our MetaMask account created. Uh, if you see right here, I already have one. But for you, if you don't have one, all you have to do is just head to metamask.io and you'll see this download button right here. Click on that. And it will lend you to this page which says install MetaMask for your browser. And down here, you'll also see some of the other supported browsers if you are using any of these. Uh, and so, yeah, just make sure that you have or you follow all the steps to have your MetaMask account set up and running. And once we do that, once our MetaMask account is created, the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we are also connected to the right network. Because what really happens is that when you set up your MetaMask account, by default, it will be connected to this network, which is Ethereum. But because we'll be working on a different network, we just want to make sure that we are connected with the Optimism Kowan testnet. So if you are not connected, because you see that I am already connected with the Optimism Co1 testnet, but for you, I'm going to show you how you can do that. All you have to do is just head to chainlistorg.org. And here you'll see this list of EVM supported chains. Enable this testnet button right here and search for Co1 or Optimism, and you'll see this one pop up. And all you have to do is just connect your wallet with this one. and Optimism Co1 testnet chain will appear in your networks. Let's just make sure that you are connected with that. And so once we have our MetaMask account created, also we have made sure that we are also connected to the right network. The next thing we want to do is that we want to add some test ethers in our wallet to make sure that transactions happen. And for that, we're going to be using this wallet, which is optimismfaucet.xyz. Let me sign out real quick. And all you have to do to get your wallet funded by some test ethers, you just have to sign in with your GitHub account. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then it will ask you to enter your Ethereum address to receive some tokens. So go to your MetaMask wallet, copy your address, Ethereum address, and paste it right here. And you can claim some tokens. now. You see that I already have some test ethers with me, so I'm going to probably skip this step, but for you, just make sure you have enough test ethers to make transactions happen. All right, now we are going to head to our code editors. Awesome. Now you see that I, I will be using VS Code, but feel free to use any of the other code editors if you really prefer something else. And if you see right here, you'll see that we don't really have any folders or repositories or directories to work with. And so this is exactly the first thing we are going to create. And to do that, we are going to open this terminal right here. Now, because I usually save all of my codes in the documents folder, so I'm going to change this path to documents. And I'm going to create a folder for this project. Let's call it Optimism NFT, seed into this folder as well. 
And to open this folder right in your code editors, all you have to do is run this command, which is code space dot. And now you'll be able to see this folder in your VS codes or any other editors you might be working with. And so let's go ahead and initialize this project by running npm init. Now see it's prompting us to input certain details like package name or version or descriptions. Let's skip that and go with suggested inputs. And this right here has created this package.json file, which contains the exact same information we just entered. So let's close this file and install another package, which is .env. Now, what this module does is that it really automatically loads environment variables from a .env file to into the processes. And so, because our next step is to create that .env file, so we would need this project or module for that. So let's go ahead and create that .env file. Oops. .env. Now in this file, what we are going to do is we have to save our MetaMask account's private key. So I'm going to go ahead and create this variable called private key. And make sure that you paste or you, you mention your MetaMask account's private key right here and save this file. For those of you who have no idea where to get this key, all you have to do is go to your MetaMask account or wallet. And you're going to see these three dots right here. Click on that, account details, and export private key. Now, once you click on this export private key button, it will ask you to enter your MetaMask account's password. So do that, and it will show you or prompt you with your MetaMask account's private key. Just copy that key and paste it right here. Now, be very careful about this information and make sure that you do not push this .env file to GitHub or anywhere public. So be very careful about this information. Uh, once you do that, once you paste your MetaMask account's private key right here, save this file and close. Now, next thing what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and install hardhat. And for that, we are going to run this command, which is npm install dash dash save dash dev and hardhat. Now, this might take some time to install everything. So we are going to wait. So Hardit has been installed. And the next thing we are going to do is we are going to create a Hardit project by running this command, which is npx hardhead. Let's go ahead and choose this option, which says empty hardhead.config file creation. And it has created this file for us. We're going to come back to this file later. But before that, let's go ahead and create two new folders. First one is this contracts folder where we are going to save and house our smart contract file. And next one's going to be scripts folder in which we are going to save our deployment file. Now let's go and install this last library or hardware plugin, which is ethers.js, by the way. Uh, and for that, we are going to run this command, which is npm install dash dash save dash dev nomic labs hardhat ethers and ethers. Now, what this hardware plugin does is that it basically brings the Ethereum library called Ethers.js, which kind of allows you to interact with Ethereum blockchain in a very simple way. So that's why we have installed this right here. And with that, we are done setting up our development environment. We have all of our folders and files ready to work with. And so let's go ahead and start working with configurations for the hardware project first. So let's open this file. I'm going to cut this entire code out and replace it with these configurations. Now, what really happening is that first thing right here, what we are doing is 
we are specifying declaring our Solidity version. So in this case, in our project, we are going to be working on 0.8.1 version of the Solidity. Next, we are specifying that our default network will be CO1 because we are working on Optimism CO1 testnet. And right here, we have mentioned this RPC URL for the CO1 Optimism. And this RPC is basically coming from the Optimism itself. And right here, if you notice, see how we are sourcing our private key from this .env file right here. And this file was coming from the .env library right here. So we are using .env library to bring this or load environment variable from a .env file. And the variable was private keys, right? So let's go ahead, save this file and close. Now with that, uh, we are also done with configuring and setting up our hardware.config file. And so next step for us is to really write our very first ER721 smart contract based on the Open Zeppelin standard. And we will be using Open Zeppelin's contract wizard tool. Let's go ahead and open the contract wizard. Now, all we have to do right here is that we will be plugging some of the information and settings uh, as per our project, starting with choosing the right standard, which is in our case, it's ERC721. Uh, ERC20 was for cryptocurrency, and then we have ERC1155 and this DAO, uh, DAO smart contract basically right here. But uh, ERC721, choose that. Next, we have the settings. Uh, and all we have to do in the settings is we have to specify the name and symbol for our NFT collection. So I'm going to change this right here and change the name to board get and change the symbol to, yeah, just do that. And next, uh, second, we have this base URI. We are going to skip this one for now because we don't need it in our project. But what we really need is some of these features right here, starting from the mintable, because we want users to be able to mint our NFT. And second, this auto increment IDs. Now, this one right here comes with a function which basically keeps tracks of the number of NFTs being minted and also make sure that every NFT is getting a unique token ID. Last thing which we want is this URI storage so that we can set the metadata to the NFT. And that is all that we needed. So this is basically the entire code for our first NFT smart contract. So we're going to go ahead and copy this from the contract wizard. Copy this one right here. Open your code editor again. And we are going to create this new file under contracts folder. So this is going to be our contracts, uh, basically smart contract file. And make sure that the name of this file is exactly the same as your token name. So for my case, it's board gets dot. So go ahead and copy the code from Open Zeppelin's code wizard to this file. And before we do anything with this file right here, let's make a small change uh, to the Solidity version because in harder.config file, we were using 0.8.1. So we can change this to 0.8.1 and save. Now you see it's uh, showing us some kind of errors right here. And it's because we have not yet imported the Open Zeppelin's contract. And to do that, we are going to install that using this command, which is npm install open Zeppelin contracts and this right here will just install all the contracts library for us so if we save this file again or even like let's open this one you'll see that all the errors have disappeared now let's go ahead and understand what's going on in this entire code starting with the very first line so the first line right here is specifying the SPDX license type to MIT, which means that anyone can use this code for their projects or maybe for academic purpose, but not for any commercial use. Next, again, we are just specifying or declaring the Solidity version, and we are telling the compiler that 0.8.1 is going to be the 
version of the Solidity on which we'll be writing our smart contract on. And then a bunch of library, which we are installing directly from this Open Zeppelin's contract repo. First one right here is this library or smart contract of ERC721, which has the core implementation of this standard. And next we have is the extension of ERC721, which is ERC721 URI storage. Now this basically sets our NFT's metadata to the URI. Then we have two other import functions. Uh, first one is ownable. Now ownable basically implements the ownership to the smart contract. And if you see down here, we also have used this only owner function, which means, or this basically provides some kind of privileged access to be able to mint. So some of the wallets or the privileged accounts or wallets will be able to mint the NFTs. And in this case, it's going to be us only, who is the owner of the smart contract. Last but not the least right here is, is the counters library, which basically provides counter that can only be incremented or decremented by one. Moving on, what we have here is this function. Now in this function, the first thing which is happening is that this function is initiating the smart contract, uh, which is in our case, the board gets smart contract and then inheriting some of the files, some of the smart contracts. Uh, so basically what we are doing is that we are inheriting the functionalities of ERC721 and then ERC721 URI storage and this ownable function right here. Then if we enter into this function, the first thing we are doing is we are initializing the counters library and we are creating a counters variable. Now this counters variable right here is exactly what will keep track of the NFT token IDs. And then in here, what we are doing is that we are setting our smart contracts name and symbol. And then comes the core functionality or the core function, which is the mint function right here. Now, this function is taking in these two parameters. First one is the address, which is going to be the address of the recipient who's going to get the newly minted NFT. And the next one is the URI, which will describe the metadata of our NFT. Now inside this function right here, uh, we are storing the current token ID, right? And then this token ID is basically being tracked by the token ID counter up here. And next, what we are doing is we are incrementing this number by one. And so what this does is that, so if let's say the first NFT is being minted with a token ID of zero, then the next NFT is going to be minted with a token ID of one. So it, it will go through zero and then onwards. And then comes the this function right here. So we are calling the mint function and we are passing these two parameters. Again, two is basically the address of the recipient who's going to get the newly minted NFT. And then here we go with the token ID, which is coming from right here. And lastly, we are just assigning the token URI or the metadata to our NFT. And so this basically sums up our Solidity smart contract code. I'm not going to go through some of these functions down below because they are basically the overrides from the libraries above, uh, which were needed here to get them executed. So we can skip this for now. And so next, what we are going to do is we are going to save this file and we are going to compile our code or, or, or this contract right here just to make sure that everything is good to deploy. So in order to do that, we are going to use this command, which is npx hardhat and compile. contract is successfully compiled so let's go ahead and start working on our deployment script so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create this new file right here and i'm going to name this file deploy.js now let's see what's going on i mean basically there's nothing much going on except for that 
we are getting this function, which is get contracts factory from ethers library. And what's happening in that is it's grabbing the contracts factory, which is used to deploy the new smart contracts. And then in here, the deployment really starts and it returns us with the contract address to which the NFT smart contract has been deployed. And so let's go ahead and run this deployment script to deploy our smart contract using this command right here, which is npx hard hat run scripts deploy.js. And then we are going to specify the network, which is go on and hit enter. So we see it has prompted us with the contract address. So let's go ahead, copy this contract. And now let's see this contract being deployed on Etherscan. And in our case, we are going to be using this Kowan Optimism Etherscan. Now, Etherscans are basically the blockchain explorer where you can just search through some transaction histories, wallets, or smart contracts, or maybe just the blocks itself, or any on-chain data, just by the way. So let's paste it in here. And you'll be able to see that we just created a new contract 48 seconds ago. So this is going to be our smart contract. It means that we have successfully launched our very first NFT smart contract. Now, next thing, and the very last thing we have to do is Oh, by the way, before we do that, so let's go ahead and also just make sure that we verify our smart contract on the ether scan. And to do that, we're going to enter into this contracts file right here, a button or, or this section. Let's go ahead and click verify and publish. Let's go and specify the compiler type. Uh, in our case, it's Solidity single file. And the last thing, last couple of things is it's asking for us uh, about the compiler version. Okay, that is 0.8.1. License is MIT and hit continue. Now, basically what it's asking for us is to enter the Solidity contracts code below. Now, if I open our Solidity code right here, you'll see that we have these dependencies and we have these imported libraries from some other source. And for us to be able to deploy or paste our entire code for verification, what we really need is that we need entire code base from all of these libraries in this file. And to be able to do that, we're going to run this very simple command, uh, which will flatten our entire Solidity file. So let's do that by running this command, which is npx hardhat flatten. And this will create this new file called flattened.sol. And here we go. So let's enter this file. Uh, let's change the version to 0.8.1. Now see it's throwing us the error and it's because this SPDX license identifier might be occurring a couple of times. So if I search through it, you see it's occurring 13 times, but in this file, it should only appear one time. So let's delete all of the occurrences and mention the SPDX license type only once and save this file, copy the entire code and go back and we are going to paste this right here. Now let's verify and publish this. Awesome, so it says that we have finally successfully published and verified our smart contract on Optimism Co1 Testnet or Etherscan. And so the next thing for us is to really work on the NFT side of it. And for that, we are going to hit Pinata. Now we are going to be using Pinata to upload two files to IPFS. First one is going to be the NFT asset, which is going to be the PNG. And the second one is going to be the metadata, which includes some traits, some features, the description, the name of the picture, and all of these kind of details. So we'll look into that. 
So let's go ahead and log in to Pinata. All right. Under my files section, you'll see this upload button. Click on that. And the first file we'll be going to be uploading is this image. All right, so file has successfully been uploaded. We'll see it any minute here. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is let's open another tab. And I have this URL right here. And what we're going to do is all we have to do is just copy the CID, which is attached with any files that we are going to upload to the Panata. Copy this one right here and paste it as a postfix. All right. Now the next file we will have to upload to Panata is the metadata. And for that, we'll go to our code editors to make the JSON file. I'm going to create a new file and going to name this one NFT metadata dot json and i'm going to paste this code right here now what we are doing here is that we are specifying certain attributes or traits so you can go and add as many attributes or traits as you want for your nft uh, and then we have description here the image url and the name of it now in the image url what we have to do is we have to copy the CID of the image and paste it in here. So this CID, let's take this one and post fix it in this URL. Save this file, go back to Pinata and upload this json.metadata file. All right. So the next thing we have to do now is we have to give this URL or URI to the metadata. And for that, we are going to head to the Kovan Etherscan. Let's go back to the contract address. All right. Now, under contract, you'll see the right contract button. Click on that. This might take some time because it's loading. All right. Connect to Web3, which basically means connect to your MetaMask account or any wallet you might be using. Now we are connected. And you see right here, we have this mint function, which is coming directly through the smart contract, which we wrote. And in here, it's asking for two uh, parameters. The first one is the address of the recipient who's going to get the newly minted NFT. So I'm going to fetch my Ethereum address, paste it here. And the next thing it's asking for us is the URI. Now, let's go back to the Pinata, copy this. URI or the CID, which is attached to the metadata file and paste it and replace it with this one. I'm going to copy this URL starting from the gateway.pinata and I'm going to input this under URI string and write. It will ask us to sign the transaction confirm your transaction and we'll be able to see the transaction which has happened. This might take some time. All right. Now it says that the transaction has successfully been executed, which means that now we might be able to display or view our NFT on Quixotic. So let's go ahead and check that out. And with that, we are finally able to display our NFT on Quixotic. Let's open this and see some of the details they might have. 
All right, so first one, we have contract address. Now this right here, this link or this uh, contract address will link us to the ether scan for Kuwan Optimism where you can see, or any users can really see the smart contract which is being deployed because we have verified it on ether scan so that any user can, who might be interacting with that can really see what's going on behind the scenes just for the sake of transparency. Then we have contract type, which is ER721 in our case, because we were minting uh, or we were launching this uh, contract for NFTs. Then we have token ID, which is set to zero. And now it's set to zero because this one is the first NFT which is being minted. For the next one, it's going to get the token ID of one because we have used an incremental counter within our smart contract. And then we have contract symbol, contract owner, and the blockchain, which is, in this case, it's optimism. And so with that, we have concluded our entire project. We learned how to write our NFT smart contract using Open Zeppelin. Then we learned how to deploy it uh, on the Optimism Co1 testnet. And we were finally able to mint the NFT and display it on Quixotic. I'll definitely link the GitHub repo for this project somewhere down below so that you can check the code base for this project. Uh, I also have a written article about the same project, so you can check that out if you want to follow along uh, through the written article. But if you have followed along to this video, awesome. And yeah, happy building, and I'll see you in the next video.